from the city that never sleeps. 17 miles from Madison Square Garden, New York City. It's America at Night with Rich Valdez, America's favorite late night talk program, featuring interesting guests from around the world and calls from across America. And now, here is your host, Rich Valdez. Hi there, good evening, and what's up, America? I am Rich Valdez, Valdez with an S, at Rich Valdez on all of the social media. Welcome to the Tuesday night edition of the program. It is election night. We are live, and I'm very excited to be here with you. The phone number, if you want to join me tonight, it's 833-482-5337. We'll be taking your calls a little bit later, but all throughout the night on what you've uh, seen on election day, what, what it looks like in your part of the world. Now. I want to get into a few things tonight. Obviously, this is it. Kamala Harris, known as Que Mala Eres, and El Trompito Donaldus Magnus are facing off for the White House tonight. And as I look at it right now, we've got Trump with 198 electoral college votes to Harris with 99 electoral college votes. Nothing to get excited about just yet, even though he's beating her, uh, you know, by double because there's still a lot to go. More states to call and more uh, more votes to count. Uh, polls are open for another hour on the West Coast, so let us not count any chickens until they hatch. But several states have been uh, already won by each candidate, and I'll get into that stuff in a minute. But I want to uh, to talk about how how interesting this is and how early voting's really made an impact. I mean, you look at a lot of this stuff, and, man, there's been a lot, a lot of uh, impact from the early voting. And I'm going to share my voting story with you. I've never waited online to vote, ever. I waited today 30 minutes. I know some people are like, oh, we wait hours. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning. Might have been 9.30. And... 30 minutes. I went with my daughter. She voted for the first time, and it was really cool. We have these new electronic voting machines, but it prints out your ballot so you can see what's on the ballot, and then you feed it into a machine yourself where it scans and tabulates your vote. So as long as the the paper ballot matches what gets scanned and electronically recorded, you're good. And if there's a hand recount, at least there's a printed paper ballot as a receipt. So I kind of like that idea. But very interesting. Never seen so much turnout. Now, I want to get into a couple of things here. You've got Trump, who's won a number of of states so far uh, that they've called uh, for El Trumpito Donaldus Magnus, the 45th president of these United States. Uh, Let me see. Let me see. Uh, Ohio. Ohio is one of those that... uh, Looks like it is going for El Trumpito. Let me see. Florida. Florida was called for El Trumpito. Texas. Texas was called for El Trumpito. Let's see. What else do we got here? Pennsylvania still floating in the wind. 47% uh, reporting. So it's not quite there. Uh, Trump is up by two with that one. And uh, speaking of spreads, and we're going to get to this all night, so I'm not trying to rush through these states just yet. Uh, But I know everybody's got their eyes trained on the battleground states, and rightfully so, right? We want to know what's going on there. But Trump doing really, really well, including, uh, let's see, um, and Harris doing really, really not that great. I mean, I was watching some of the analysis on the shows, and they're saying that she's underperforming Biden in a lot of places. It was one state that I saw that she uh, was actually over uh, outperforming Biden, and that was uh, you know good for her, but not a good look thus far. But again, the left coast is not in, so I don't want to um, to uh, sell anybody any false hope over here. But it's looking good, and we're going to have a bunch of people by the way tonight. We've got a, a number of really good guests. Uh, presuming we can get them all, it's election night, so we got to stay fluid with these things. But we have a, a number of people that are calling us from these battleground states. Um, my buddy Bruce Lavelle, a senior, uh, a longtime Trump advisor, who uh, is 
from the state of Georgia. He'll be uh, joining us in a little bit, a little bit after the bottom of the hour. Uh, our buddy Dom Giordano, uh, who's filled in for me on this program, you know him, uh, an old colleague of mine from 1210 WPHT in Philadelphia. He will be uh, giving us a call from the battleground state of Pennsylvania with an update on what's going on there. Uh, we got a reporter for the Daily Signal calling us to give us the, the latest on uh, what's going on in Michigan. And uh, that's uh, Elizabeth Troutman Mitchell. And uh, let's see, Mark Lauder, former special assistant to President Trump and the chief communications director at the America First Policy Institute. Uh, he'll be calling us at the, after the bottom of the hour as well. As well as Peter Navarro. White House trade advisor to President Trump, a political prisoner. You know him. He spoke at the RNC convention the day he got out of jail, and then he was on the air with us the very next day. And uh, Peter Navarro will be joining us as well, live from Mar-a-Lago. So uh, lots of lots of really good guests, uh, not to mention one of my favorites on debate nights and and, and uh, election nights, Jen Kearns. She is a, an excellent strategist and um and former uh, spokeswoman for the California Republican Party. And we're going to wrap it up with some analysis on the Electoral College with uh, Trent Anglin, the executive director of Save Our States. So a uh, very, very action-packed night. And, um, again, as much uh, breaking news as we can get you from every one of these states as they start to roll in. Now, I want to get into uh, the spread because uh, there's a lot of snoo- uh, snooze. There's a lot of news that's coming in right now that Trump is outperforming himself, and this is pretty encouraging news uh, because he's doing really, really well with Hispanic voters, in particular uh, Hispanic men, uh, better than anticipated. And comes as no surprise to me. I think I've um, I've seen that. You know, a lot of my friends are Hispanic men, like me. And uh, we've seen that. But the initial exit polls are showing Donald Trump on track for the highest Hispanic uh, voter turnout um, for a Republican ever. And they're thinking that it might beat George W. Bush. Who had a 40 percent share back in 2004. So we're going to see how that goes. But I want you to hear how the left is handling this. Uh, there is a, a lot of analysts on MSNBC that are sitting around the table uh, doing what I'm doing, right? Watching the results come in, sharing it with their audience. But they're not taking it so well. Listen to this. Maria, Teresa, we have some uh, national, w- broad national polling about exit polling, about let- Harris's strength among Latino men. And they seem to be breaking for Donald Trump, which is a, a very big difference from 2020 when they broke for Joe Biden by, I th- believe, 23 points. Mm-hmm. They may be breaking for Trump by as many as 10 points. Again, this is early, early, early. So, yeah, M- if MSNBC is saying it may be as much as 20 points, um, maybe they're trying to uh, to um, oversell it so they can say, oh, it's only 10 points, uh, not even close. But guess what? 10 points uh, is huge, huge in the words of El Trompito. So um, that, that's going to be a big deal, and that's going to cut into a lot of their margins. Very difficult for Democrats to use their traditional base of black and Hispanic voters as well as like white, uh, white voters who are blue-collar um, union workers. Uh, that's, that's like their traditional base. It's difficult to hold on to that base if – It's getting splintered off. We've seen already how the Teamsters said they're not voting, but the membership said we're going with Trump. You've seen the Steamfitters Union. They said they're going with Trump. You you see uh, African-American men, many of them are saying they're going with Trump. So even if they maintain their majority, him splintering off that vote, these are the margins of victory for El Trumpito should that uh, momentum continue throughout the night. So we're going to continue a lot of the analysis that we have. We've got lots to talk about tonight, and I'm looking forward to getting into a lot of it with you guys. But keep it locked right here. We've got more to come straight ahead. I'm Rich Valdez. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. America at Night, your home for the best election coverage. 
Well, thank you, Rich, and thank you for everything. I know you very well, and I have I listen, but I have a lot of people that listen, and they love your show, and I appreciate it very much. America at Night with Rich Valdez. All right, amigos, welcome back. Rich Valdez keeping you company straight till 1 a.m. We're live, we're national, and we've got our guest with us. As we take a look at the latest uh, Electoral College results, we've got 225 to 10, what's that? 117, uh, 225 in Trump's favor. Our guest is former White House trade advisor, political prisoner. He's free and he's back with us. Peter Navarro, welcome, sir. Hey, couldn't be more happy to be with you on the uh, other side of the coast here um, from Palm Beach. I'm, I'm at Mar-a-Lago tonight with the boss and um, with uh, his supporters. And um, so far, the news looks good, but we uh, remain cautiously optimistic, which is prudent. I uh, spent the last 10 days out in the field, um, partly on a bus tour crisscrossing North Carolina. We were over in Georgia, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and um, partly with the boss. Last night was uh, it was a beautiful night. At 3 a.m., um, President Trump was still on stage in Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, delivering what will be the final Trump rally of what's over 600 of these. And um, it wow. just feels good out there. I don't know people will get to the polls but if they do then it's a win you know peter navarro um the uh the the vibe that i'm feeling across the country uh you know from the callers calling in and what i see myself out here in new york and in the suburbs uh is is very uh pro-trump i don't see a lot of enthusiasm for democrats and again i live across the water in jersey it's a very blue state but there isn't a lot of enthusiasm here. But the momentum seems all in Trump's favor. And um, so far, it, it's seemingly looking that way. What's the vibe like at Mar-a-Lago? Uh, well, look, I mean, Mar-a-Lago, everybody's uh, pro-Trump and they're, they're looking things. But look, I think what I heard out, out across the battlegrounds was a three-part mantra. And it's basically the closing argument. America is in trouble. You can see that in uh, more than 80 percent of people believe the country's going in the wrong direction. Uh, we've had enough time since the convention to prove that Kamala Harris has caused most of that trouble. And we had four years of Donald Trump to prove that Donald Trump can get us out of that trouble. So why would you not vote for Donald Trump? I, I think Harris was uh, negligent in making any kind of closing argument. I mean, at the end of the day, all she had was abortion, abortion, abortion. And one of the saddest things I saw is out in Reading, Pennsylvania. Um, And I come down in the morning getting ready to get the bus thing going again. And um, there's a bunch of Harris people down down where we're eating breakfast, right? It's, I don't know, maybe a dozen women, young women. They all got their abortion T-shirts on. And it was like they might as well have had blinders on, too, because they, yeah. they didn't feel inflation. Somehow they were, like, privileged enough to have to, have to worry about that with irony there. Um, they don't have any concept of foreign policy and the national security threats, Gaza, Ukraine, the Taiwan Straits, that Harris and Biden have gotten us into. And I guess they're not afraid of getting raped or murdered by an illegal alien or losing their jobs. It's like, mm. and it was sad. I mean, there's no, there's no vision there, but that's her hope. I mean, if the abortion issue weren't an issue, Trump would win probably about 80 to 20. So we need to heal this country. I think Trump's the one who can do it. Abortion really should be thought of now as a state issue, not a federal issue. And if he loses tonight, we're going to lose this country. I, I am sure of that as the day is long. 
you know, Peter Navarro, you're you're uh, an economist and um, you know, a pretty good one, and that seemed to me was the the largest issue uh, on the on the ballot today. Do you feel like besides abortion, or at least that was Kamala's uh, offering to her supporters? Do you think that a uh, uh, I guess do you agree with me, or do you think differently that that's what's moving people to vote? What what uh, I didn't hear the first part the of that. What, what's I think um, I think I agree with the boss on that. The the polls say inflation in the economy, and certainly there's a lot of folks out there in Trump land who have to choose uncomfortably now between food on the table, medicine in the cabinet, and a roof over their head. But I think the border issue is really uh, moving the needle in a lot of ways. Every town has become a border town. And I'm telling you, at least in the rallies, uh, this whole transgender men in women's sports right, and the general mutilization of young teenage boys, man, that, that, it's like what the issue in and of itself signals to people is how crazy the people who are in control of the Democrat Party are. I mean, we got so many Democrats who who love the Trump deplorables. Uh, They all take showers afterward, not before. I'm in Grand Rapids, and behind him there's a bunch of UAW workers. I'm in Pittsburgh. It's the United Steel workers. I'm going up and down North Carolina, and they all remember how Bill Clinton's NAFTA and China into the World Trade Organization screwed their textile and furniture industries. And, um, yeah, it's it's that appeal of MAGA, the Make a Great Again movement, where all we wanted was strong manufacturing base, secure borders, and an end to endless wars. And, and that's yeah. kind of what it's, it's all about. And by the way, if he wins tonight, um, the, the book I've written, I just mentioned to your listeners, New Maga sure. Deal. It's at newmagadeal.com. The reason why I mention it is because it's got the action agenda, 100 actions in 100 days starting on, on our, you know, Inauguration Day. And one of the things when I was in Pittsburgh, I got kind of nostalgic because I remember back in 2016 helping with the famous jobs plan speech. And in that speech, Donald Trump made famously seven promises to the American people. And damn it, if he didn't keep every single one of them. Yeah. And this time Peter around, Navarro, he's going to keep I just want to remind too. people uh, of the book, The New MAGA Deal, The Unofficial Deplorables Guide to Donald Trump's 2024 Policy Platform. And the website is Peter Navarro. That's Navarro with two R's. PeterNavarro.com. And the, Peter, the, what, the what's coming down the pipe? Actually, is going yeah. to be newmagadeal.com, newmagadeal.com. New- Interestingly, the publisher is yeah. Don Jr., newmagadeal.com. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sergio Check Gore, right? Yeah, they're yeah, great yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah, You know Sergio. Yeah, I know Sergio. He's there with you. Tell him I said hi. The event I'm at here in Mar-a-Lago, um, Sergio ran a super pack. He did the most yeah. amazing job, Sergio Gore. He did a fantastic job. Send them my best. Peter, they're going to cut us off. God bless you, brother. Hope to see what's coming next from you. And, folks, we're coming right back with more on tonight's election night coverage with me, Rich Valdez. Peter Navarro, you're a hero, brother. God bless you. night your home for the best election coverage i think for all of us in our family it was a bit of a bittersweet moment because this has been our life for nine years and you know we've all been through so much and we really feel like the american people have been through it with all of us and so to be out there one last time on that stage with my father-in-law a man who has been tested in every way a person can be and is still fighting um it was one of the the biggest honors of my entire life and i think you could kind of see he didn't himself maybe even want to get off that stage at the end because i think he wants to just 
always hang on to how powerful this movement he created in our country truly has been. All right, that is Lara Trump. She, of course, is the chairwoman, the co-chairwoman of the Republican National Committee. And uh, and I think she's a spot on right there. Welcome back, familia. Rich Valdez with you live till 1 a.m. Eastern time. I'm coming out of New York, but we've got people on the ground all across the country tonight. And we're live and we're national. Here's the number, 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. And I uh, just want to go over a couple of things, right? So you got some competing information out there. Uh, I think Fox News is ahead of the game. AP is catching up, the Associated Press, uh, with uh, the numbers looking slightly different, right? You've got uh, the AP count being 198 for Trump, 112 for Harris, and the Fox News totals being 205 for Trump, 117 for Harris. So um, they haven't called uh, one of these little states just yet. But I'll give you what they've got so far. Florida has been called for Trump. South Carolina has been called for Trump. Alabama has been called for Trump. Uh, Let's see, what's this one? Mississippi for Trump. Louisiana for Trump. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, Missouri, Kentucky, West Virginia, Ohio, Indiana. Uh, Kansas, Utah, Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota. Great, 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 great. All great states. I'm on in all of those states. And uh, what's been called so far for uh, Vice President Harris, you got Colorado, New York, uh, Vermont, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and D.C. So, that's where we're at right now. Now, is it a nail biter? Not just yet. Honestly, it looks like a pretty, uh, a, a pretty, a pretty decent ride for El Trompito Donaldus Magnus, the forty-fifth president of these United States. But that doesn't mean he's not going to hit a bump in the road, because that could happen on election night. Again, you've got the entire left coast, right? The West Coast, uh, where all the lefties are, they are yet to be uh, to call to, to call anything, right? The polls are still open for another twenty-five minutes. So we're not we're not letting the fat lady sing just yet. But I want to remind you that one of uh, Trump's advisors is going to be uh, joining us in the next segment. He's scheduled to be joining us uh, from Georgia, right, from the uh, from the peach state to give us an update on what's going on in in battleground Georgia. Um, Despite, um, you know, what we know so far, 16 electoral college votes on the line hasn't been called yet now. I want to talk about some of the stuff that that you hear out there because you've got some change, right? And there's there's a lot of people looking forward to a lot of things. A lot of people have been scared, uh, like we just talked about with um, Peter Navarro. People have been scared through the use of demagoguery to scare them into thinking, you know, if you vote for a certain candidate, forget about your pocketbook. Think about women's reproductive rights. I know a thing or two about women, A, because I love them, and B, I, I have two daughters, and I wouldn't ever put them in harm's way. But I also, I also think that this is not the federal government's uh, business, right? To quote Tim Walls, uh, get, mind your damn business, right? That's what he says, good old Tiananmen Tim. And the reason our governments are structured the way they are is that certain things need to be decided by the people closest to the government, right? So that's why, like, I would never call Congress or or the president or anybody else to fix a pothole outside my street because, obviously, I would contact the government that's closest to me, right, my local town government. So for decisions like that, the the critique is always, well, this is something you should decide with your doctor. Well, go ahead and decide it with your doctor, and while you're at it, do it within your state. Let your state laws figure that out. And this way you can lobby your state legislators, your state senators, state assemblymen. It's got nothing to do with the federal government. The federal government doesn't regulate abortion, shouldn't regulate abortion, and doesn't regulate abortion. So when you hear things, scare tactics like um, there's an abortion registry, and if you get one, Donald Trump's going to write your name on it. I mean, that's, A, how do you do that? What doctor do you think is going to participate in this? And B, it's just crazy. I would never consent to something like that. What, which, which Republican, excuse me, do you think would ever consent to something like that? Republicans who hate the government, right? They can't stand big government. 
So it makes no sense on its face. But you've got other scare tactics. A threat to democracy. They say, el trompito, a threat to democracy. Now, this might be true if we don't know who this man is. But the reality is we've already seen this man in action. We already saw that during his administration there were no new wars. That the median household income for Hispanics was was up. African Americans were earning more money. Unemployment was way down. Home ownership was up. So now you tell me, no war, more money? A good four years despite a once in a hundred years pandemic destroying the economy to the point of shutting us down, lockdowns and all of that, and we still managed to get through because the economy was rip-roaring? So the question to me becomes, if we already know what Trump can do, why should we believe the scare tactics? And I think most Americans didn't. And that's why, that's why we're in the situation we're in, where you're seeing a lot of states um, going for Trump. And I think you're, you're going to see a lot of people Uh, individual people. You're seeing uh, a 10-point lead with Hispanic men. Big deal. That wasn't always the case. I think you're going to see similar with African-American men, maybe even African-American women. So as that information becomes available, we're going to bring all of that to you. But uh, keep it locked right here. We're going to come right back with, uh, hopefully, with uh, one of our our guests who is going to be giving us a call uh, from Georgia, my buddy Bruce Lavelle, uh, senior Long-time Trump advisor. Keep it locked right here on Rich Valdez. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. For the best election coverage. I want to listen to you, Rich, all the time. America at Night with Rich Valdez. We want to bring everybody in. We want to be very inclusive, and we will be very inclusive. Uh, We have a, a great country, but we have a country that's in trouble. It's in big trouble in many ways, and we have to straighten it out. That is El Trompito speaking with reporters right before he voted in Palm Beach, Florida earlier today. Uh, saying that, you know, we need to work to end the division in America. When we come back, I'll let you know what he said afterwards, after he voted. But right now, I want to check in with somebody who's no stranger uh, to uh, politics with Donald Trump. He's been with him since day one, uh, flying on Trump Force One with him, and he's been there since the beginning. Um, My buddy, senior advisor, longtime advisor to President Trump, Bruce Lavelle. Welcome, sir. Hey, man, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm right here in the mix right now, right here at Palm Beach, man, the convention center. A lot of excitement, a lot of, uh, a lot of happy people, man. We're not done yet, but we're feeling good. So now, Bruce Lavelle, I know you're from Georgia, but right now you're at the Palm Beach Convention Center. What's the vibe like in the convention center right now? Vibe is good, man. You know, listen, there's a lot of, uh, uh, we're very optimistic. You know, we're looking at Virginia. We're looking, uh, obviously, you said what's going on in Wisconsin with their, uh, delay yeah. <laughs> you want to use that mm-hmm. um i still think we got a shot in michigan um you know uh it's just a matter of time i respectfully i think they're going to have to call georgia and north carolina so um just get over that obstacle at pennsylvania and hey man we're we're we're, we're going home so yeah it's, it's great man there's a different mm-hmm. feeling you know than 20 obviously we're shut down we had all the the pandemic going on and you know we we uh you know, are very optimistic and anxious just to be out gathering. You know, we didn't have that in 2020. So there's a lot of folks that are, that are very thankful that it's not a replay of that particular situation we had in 2020. So that's why there's so much excitement. Now, Bruce, by the way, I had to get what? to a, I had to get to a corner cause it's just too noisy it, in there. So. It's too noisy. Yeah, I bet. I bet. I saw some of the video. It's, it's huge in there. I mean, there's probably what, five, 10,000 yeah. people there. Oh yeah. It's, it's quite a bit, man. It's, it's, uh, it's good stuff. Good vibe. 
Now, what are your thoughts? Uh, let's talk about Pennsylvania. I think a lot of people are eyeing Pennsylvania. Um, and I hear some, some analysts are saying, you know what, who cares? If he doesn't get Pennsylvania, he still has a shot with a bunch of other uh, avenues. W- what's your take? Um, well, you know, listen, we, we, I think that Pennsylvania, we're going to prevail with Pennsylvania, but I think a lot of it has to do with obviously their uh, election handlers, if you want to use that term. That's something that, you know, we've always been shifty-eyed with, obviously, because of what happened uh, before in 2020. But I think the overall folks in Pennsylvania, it's especially the residents, you know, Rich, I think they, they're looking at their checkbooks. They're looking at uh, a fentanyl crisis that's really devastated, of course, um, Philadelphia. You, you've seen that yourself, sir. I mean, our, our church mm-hmm. had went out there and helped with a lot of missions in that particular region and area. Um, and so... Um, you know, they're, they're all affected in one capacity to another. So I think that's going to be the, the big drawing point to get um, a lot of those voters that did vote for Biden and Democrats over the finish line for President Trump. And, you know, Fetterman, you know, he's out there talking very moderate. <laughs> he's a senator. He's kind of like, you know, he's, he's, he gave President Trump a couple of compliments before they interviewed him. He's, you know, so um, it's, it's, uh, I'm feeling good about it, man. Yeah, I got to tell you, I, I've seen Fetterman making that move also. He he started off really, really uh, kind of leftward, and he's been making uh, the way to the middle because uh, I think he's realized Pennsylvania is just not that progressive. And uh, his politics, are, I think, were a little bit out there. Now, uh, let's talk about Georgia. That's your home state. Uh, what's going on yeah. in Georgia? Do you think we're taking it home? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, Georgia's in play, obviously, because of uh, – once again, we're dealing with, uh, you know, high inflation. You know, Rich, there's 90-plus thousand eviction notices right now in the city of Atlanta. You know, the, uh, um, the economy is tough. Um, you're going to see a big game changer on black voter turnout. Listen, Georgia's 34% black population right now. And right. Uh, black men are tremendously showing up. But here's something interesting. Watch this, Rich. There's a lot of folks that are not for either one and staying home. Yes, I know that's kind of so. That's kind of believe it or not, that's more favorable that to Trump. President Trump, obviously, exactly, yeah. because they're you know black America, black voters in Georgia, thirty four percent population, it's one of the highest black concentration of, of uh, population in the in the country. So, um, so you have that particular block there, but you also have a tremendous amount of black males that, as they say, we ride with Trump, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know, and it's kind of bizarre because I've never been in the hood so many times in certain urban areas where I've seen red MAGA caps. You know, 16, Rich, you know, you had to wear a vest back then. Yeah, right. You had to be packing heat to rock a MAGA. <laughs> exactly. So um, so it's, it's, it's a great turning point. It's a it's a great uh, I call it a great reformation, a control alt delete, as you might say. Um, and President Trump is. Uh, open this thing wide open for the future of any other of these America first candidates that want to put their name on the ballot and carry the same uh, America first, you know, and that's what this big tent's all about. So I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm feeling good about it. Now, Bruce Lavelle, uh, final thought from you. Let's talk about the um, moving forward. Uh, do, do you think that we're going to have resolution in the next hour, two hours, three hours tonight? Are we going to wake up tomorrow and have a new president or a new president-elect, or is this going to drag out like some people are predicting? I, I have predicted no later than 2, 3 a.m. Uh, you know, that, that was the worst-case scenario. I, and I'm doing another play-by-play, obviously, from 2016, but that's when we knew it was 3 a.m., if you remember. And right, listen, totally. When, when, when I'm booked to be on these liberal networks, CNN, MSNBC. So if they unbook me, that's a, that start unbooking me, they know that we're going to win. <laughs> so, <laughs> we don't want to hear no, from this serious, guy. That's what happened to me in 16. That's what happened to me. So I was kind of hoping, I take all these bookings, all these crazy left-wing uh, liberal radio, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, TV networks, and then yeah. as, as, as we get closer to win, then they start unbooking me. <laughs> True story. The last thing they need when they lose is a, is a black Trump supporter. Oh, God, on their national TV? Yes, brother. Yeah, but they want to put me on there if they think we're losing and talk smack, but yeah. But yeah, it's going to be, uh, it's real exciting, Rich. It really is, man. I'm, I tell well, you, man, it's been a long me. journey. Yeah, because it's yeah. like, you know, I've been doing this since 2015. I was with Corey Lindowski early. We were talking, and I just remember riding around in July in 2015 on the plane, man. And just here mm-hmm. we are, 2024, bro. It's been a long, long ride. 
Yeah, and not to mention the historical aspect of it, right? The fact yeah. that he yeah. became president once and again, yeah. and and not yeah. not not in succession, right? That's that, that's yeah. pretty uh, historic in, in and of itself. Bruce Lavelle, yeah. you're you're a gentleman, a scholar, and a patriot, brother. I appreciate no, your man, time. Appreciate you. Great show too, man. I appreciate you. You, oh, got a, thanks, you got a man. great, you got a great crew too, man. You got a great, you got great producers, by the way. Shout out. Man, to them. Well, you know, we got great <laughs> guests like you. Got to keep you coming back, my brother. Thank you. All right, You're the man. You, Have a blast. You too. God bless. All right, folks, we're coming right back. More to come straight ahead. I got a lot more guests that are in the know that are, uh, you know, moving and shaking and um, texting them back and forth. And some of them are going to join me on the air as we uh, continue to bring you to coverage right now. Before I hit this break, it's Harris 117, Trump 211. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. America at Night, your home for the best election coverage. I would like to tell uh, all of the people that are in line to stay in line. Uh, we have tremendous Republican lines, and uh, I've been asked sh- actually to say it. Uh, it takes a while. I'd like to just make uh, the statement that I'd like the Republicans to stay in line. Democrats, if they'd like, they can leave. But I'd like the Republicans to stay in line. <laughs> That's El Trumpito, Donaldus Magnus, the 45th president of these United States. And uh, remember I said, I'll, I'll let you know what he said on the way back. That was what he said after he voted. He said, if you're a Republican, stay online. If you're a Democrat, go home. You got to love that. Uh, hopefully they won't try and prosecute him for uh, trying to slow down an election. I don't know if you guys remember, there was a guy who put a meme out a couple of years ago. And that's what the meme said. It said something like... Uh, you know, uh, it's a joke I have used for years, and I don't use it anymore, and I'm going to tell you why. Because they try to put that guy in jail, the meme guy. Uh, he said, election day is November 5th uh, for Republicans and November 6th for Democrats. I, I, I've been saying that for years. Thank God the FBI has never come knocking on my door. But uh, apparently this guy got himself into some trouble doing that because he had a huge following on Twitter and whatnot. So... I've laid off on the joke. The government scared me. I don't want to go to jail for making jokes. Eh, at least not yet. Anyway, speaking of voting and jokes and all that stuff, uh, I went voting today, and I waited online for about a half hour. That's never happened to me before. And it was so interesting. I mean, there were so many people. And so many people were so enthused to see that I was there with my youngest daughter. And she um, she's 19, and she voted for the first time uh, today. And... And people were just like, I guess because she's kind of short, people thought, you know, that uh, she was like younger than she is. And they were just like, oh, thanks for voting. Thanks for voting. And she was so excited to get her I voted sticker. But I mean, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I was also very excited to get my I voted sticker. And uh, and I put a video of, of me putting my sticker on and uh, rocking my really cool gray Make America Great Again hat that I got at uh, Madison Square Garden at the Trump rally last weekend. Anyway. All that being said, uh, it was a it was a great experience to be there with my my munchkin. Uh, couldn't be there with my big girl because uh, she's in uh, Virginia, uh, but made every attempt to vote absentee. So good on her. And uh, we got a lot more to come. We've got a whole hour of programming after this, and a third hour of programming after that. So don't go anywhere. We got the best election coverage with me, uh, Rich Valdez, and of course I am my own favorite talk show host, and I hope I am yours too. Uh, The phone number, if you want to join us by phone, is 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. And uh, I'm getting a text right now. It says, the Young Turks are on TV saying Trump is going to win. Ay, bendito. Don't go anywhere. I'm Rich Valdez. The city that never sleeps. 17 miles from Madison Square Garden, New York City. It's America at Night with Rich Valdez 
America's favorite late night talk program featuring interesting guests from around the world and calls from across America. And now, here is your host, Rich Valdez. Hi there, good evening, and what's up, America? I am Rich Valdez, Valdez with an S, at Rich Valdez on all of the social media. Welcome to our number two of the program. We're live, we're national. Here's the phone number, 833-482-5337, 833-4VALDEZ. If you want to weigh in, we're getting to your calls in a little bit. But right now, I want to give you a quick update on what's going on uh, during our break, uh, the top of the hour break. Washington, Oregon, California, all called for Harris, as well as Colorado and Illinois, so bringing Harris to 193 Electoral College votes to Trump at 216 Electoral College votes. Uh, Georgia hanging in the balance. North Carolina not called yet. Virginia still hanging in the balance, likely to go to Harris, but it's anybody's bet right now. Uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada, Alaska, Hawaii, all um up for grabs at the moment. And uh, some news that came out of Pennsylvania earlier today. Of course, Pennsylvania is the state to watch. Big whopping 19 electoral college votes. And I want you to listen to this. Before we get started here, I just saw a message on X from Michael Watley, the GOP party chair. He said early this morning there were some issues with poll watchers getting turned away. They deployed attorneys engaged, and now poll, walk, poll watchers are being let into the building. That is in the state of Pennsylvania, just to give you an idea of what's going on out there. That was a report from the national desk. And again, saying, uh, you know, last time they said, no, nobody was stopping anybody from doing poll watching. Well, guess what? They were. They got caught out there. The uh, Republican attorneys rolled up, straightened it out. They even got extra time to vote. And I want to get a report from somebody who knows Pennsylvania politics better than better than just about anybody. It's Dom time. Dom Giordano, welcome back, brother. Hey, Rich. Thanks uh, very much. Yeah, you know, in places like Philadelphia, this happens a lot. Some of it because we have polling stations in businesses and the homes of people. And these are Democrats, and they just tell the Republican, no, we're not going to let you in. You're not watching any poll here. Republicans yeah. much better this time with Watley and the people we had on the ground here. It was instantaneous. Rich, we had an issue with several major hospitals with sick people coming over the PA system and saying, we're going to have an emergency voting form on your lunch tray today. And this is all nefarious stuff to be doing this. Yeah. I got calls from doctors one of whom uh, used to treat my foot, saying, you know, put a stop to this. And instantly they had people at the hospitals on this, stuff like that all day. It was flawless, the execution by the Republicans to take care of this stuff. Outstanding. Now, Dom Giordano, uh, I know that, you know, you, you've done this a million times, uh, a veteran of talk radio in Philadelphia. And I want to get your sense of how this is going I've been talking to people all night, and everybody's like, it's anybody's guess. It's up for grabs. Montgomery County, Allegheny County, this, that, and a third. What say you? Um, I'm uh, very hopeful of the uh, rich, this idea that we had staggering numbers of people turning out of here today in Philadelphia. There were some neighborhoods, somewhat Trump, somewhat Harris, but in neighborhoods like North Philly that you know, West Philly, highly African-American, Latino uh, the lines, particularly West Philadelphia, were not overwhelming, particularly throughout the middle parts of the day. So Harris is not going to do the numbers that President Obama did, probably not even what Biden did last time around. And it's a numbers game. The story yeah. tonight that I think is beautiful is the Amish came out, New York Post and others yeah. reporting, and unprecedented numbers. A lot of this due to Scott Presler the vote-getter extraordinaire, and yeah. the raw milk sort of stuff, religious freedom, the raid by the government there. And uh, we're seeing stories like that all over the place. The policies have always been there. You enunciate them so well, and Trump does it. I don't know what other Republican can do it. It takes the magic of Trump to get people to listen to the policies and also such a bad economy. Yeah, well, thank you for that. And you know what? I think you're 100% right. I, I was telling somebody earlier today, I said, you know, the Raging Cajun, he's going to go down in history for probably one of the best political quotes ever, which is, it's the economy, stupid. 
I mean, truer words have never been spoken. These these kitchen table pocketbook issues are really what matters to people. When people's paycheck comes and it goes just as quick as it came, they start thinking, hold on a second, what's going on here? And I think too many people are going through that where it doesn't matter if you're black, brown, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. People are saying, you know what, I don't like this. And if that's what a, a vote for Biden or Harris or Obama means, I'm going with Trump. Yeah. And again, uh, Trump, too, particularly with younger men and their outreach with that, gets the attention. Again, the policies were there. But a guy like Mitt Romney can't execute that. He's a guy walking around in a top hat. Trump has transformed the Republican Party, if they can hold it, into the working class party. The deeper poverty areas of Philadelphia are the big, some of the biggest red spots of Philadelphia now particularly Latino neighborhoods, along with Italian neighborhoods, where I was last night in South Philly, that's where you're seeing that. Think of a Frank Rizzo back in the past or people like that. (laughs) And also think of, though, people of color joining in, particularly men with Trump. Can Republicans get that? The the tariff thing, for example, Rich, he's not going to put massive tariffs on everybody. It is a lever. It's something he's going to use to go after the Chinese and also some other American companies. And guess what? Working class people think the tariff is a fair idea or at least the threat of that. And once he gets in, there'll be negotiations. You know, Trump knows how to play this so that it will be measured. So I have no objection to that. And Tom Giordano, with two minutes to you, what do you think on holding the House, gaining seats and uh, the Senate? Well, the Senate looks awfully good here in Pennsylvania. McCormick is doing very well against Bob Casey, who is the descendant of the last good Democrat, Bob Casey Sr. Uh, The House rich is going to be quite a battle going down to the lines. But Trump scoring in places like New York, et cetera, is very, very helpful. And New York Times saying he has a shot to win the popular vote. That, to me, seems to be an impossibility. But I think it could happen. But I want to ask you to take back to my listeners. You know New York better than I do. Can they hold those seats out on Long Island, et cetera? Yeah, let me tell you, Long Island's definitely Trump country. I think that they can definitely hold the line there. And again, I know it's early yet in the evening, but Harris uh, is at 47 million votes. Trump's at 53 million. And that that, that spread has been holding pretty much uh, throughout the night. And California's in, Texas is in. So a lot of the big ones are in. Uh, I, I think... We might see uh, Trump if, uh, come out victorious and hold the, uh, the uh, popular vote. We'll see. Wow. That is amazing, Rich. Very much. Yeah. Don Giordano, you're the man, brother. Let everybody know how they could follow you, hear you, and all that. Yeah, at Show 1210 you can follow me on Twitter, noon to 3, on Talk Radio 1210 out of Philadelphia. And, uh, Rich, thank you so much. It's a great night to share this with your listeners. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you staying up late and hanging out with us. Dom Giordano, everybody. Thanks, Rich. God bless you, brother. You bet. And, amigos, we are going to come right back. Uh, Your calls and more are coming up. Plus, I've got – hold on. Don't go anywhere. I'll tell you what i got coming up. I've got a report from the Daily Signal uh, with uh, Elizabeth Troutman Mitchell. We're scheduled to speak with her about what's going on in Michigan. So uh, keep that locked right here. Plus, we've got Jen Kearns coming up after that. Trent England with a report on the Electoral College. And, of course, the guy with the best head of hair in all of late night talk radio. That's right. He's coming back, too. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. America at Night, your home for the best election coverage. Uh, by the way, your ratings are up. Congratulations. Thank I had somebody. You, it's always nice to check. I like to see, <laughs> even if they're friends, I like to see how are they doing. Are people listening, right? That's but right. You're, you're doing great. America at Night with Rich Valdez. All right, America, welcome back. Rich Valdez keeping your company straight till 1 a.m. Eastern time. And we've got a report with... Uh, the esteemed Daily Signal 
uh, journalists joining us momentarily, Elizabeth Troutman Mitchell. But first, I want to go to the phone lines, 833-4-VALDEZ, and I want to check in with somebody that is posing as my 19-year-old daughter, Chach. Are you on the phone? Hey. How are you? So tell America about uh, your voting experience earlier today. First time voting, 19 years old. Go. Yes, it was so great. Um, it was kind of confusing. You know, I tried to vote for two people in the same category. I didn't know that they were horizontal instead of vertical. Very confusing, but it was still mm-hmm. such a great time. And I got a sticker. The sticker was the best part. I'm still wearing it at work 10 hours Love later, that. 11 hours later. It's the best day of my life, actually. I feel so American <laughs> and so adult. It's such a great time. And, Dad, you're you doing so-, so good, let me tell you. I've never listened before. This is my first time because... You're always there, and I hear it so often, but this is so cool to hear your clips and the other people talking. You're not talking to yourself for once. This is awesome. (laughs) Thank you. And uh, uh, let everybody know before we we hang up, because I have a a very important guest that's on the line um, with a report on Michigan. But tell everybody who you voted for for president. I voted for Donald J. Trump for president because I want to buy a house when I'm older. I would like to have money in. Not be well, for the rest of my life. Amen. I love that story. Thank you for calling in. Big shout out to everybody listening in your neck of the woods. Chach, daddy loves you. Bye, baby. I love you too. See you soon. Bye. Bye. And we continue. That was a point of personal privilege. Uh, thank you for indulging me, America. And I want to get a report on the blue wall. What's going on with Michigan and Wisconsin and all of that? Will Michigan crack? Uh, a lot of people are suspecting that it might. I want to get a report from Elizabeth Troutman Mitchell. She's a reporting fellow for The Daily Signal and co-host of The Daily Signal podcast. Elizabeth, welcome. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Now, uh, t- tell me, what is your initial uh reaction to what you think is happening uh in michigan i i see you know it's it, it, a lot of people reporting could be anybody's game what say you i think that is correct trump in the months leading up to the election in the polls had about a one point lead over harris and it looks like according to decision desk right now michigan is looking Um, A little bit more red, well, it's too soon to call, but I think something we've seen in a lot of other states that we're also seeing in Michigan is that demographics that don't usually support Trump are tired of three and a half, four years in the Biden-Harris administration really looking for a change. Some people voting for Trump for the first time, some people who have always been Republicans that are going to make sure to come to the polls this year to support him. So I think, like you said, it is really going to be close in Michigan, but I think some of these these switches we're seeing from Democrat or not typical voters to voting for Trump could really make the difference here. Yeah, I'm with you. And, and you know, yesterday uh, I had a conversation with uh, Kwame Kilpatrick, former Detroit mayor, who's uh, he's on the campaign trail for Trump. He was at the Grand Rapids uh, rally yesterday uh, endorsing Trump and whatnot. And and we saw Trump again at a different rally um, recently with a bunch of members of the uh, Arab American Muslim community that were really out there. And it seems like Trump has really made some inroads with Jews and Christians and, and, and black Americans, Hispanic Americans. What are your thoughts there? That's definitely true. I w- was able to be at that Trump rally where those Muslim Americans endorsed Trump. And I spoke to some of those people you mentioned. I spoke to a Hispanic girl who said she grew up Democrat, um, as a lot, like a lot of other Hispanics, but she grew up thinking that Democrats um, represented the working class, but she got older, she did her research, and she realized that wasn't true, and now she supports Trump. I talked to Amish people who traditionally don't vote, but are voting hmm. for Trump yeah. because they're Christians, they care about their religious freedom, they care about the right to life, um, they care about marriage, they care about gender, um, God-given, you know, biological gender. So I think that's causing a lot of people to vote for the first time. And I think a lot of Muslim Americans really think that Trump is the candidate who's more likely to bring peace abroad and who's more likely to fix the current economic situation. And I talked to some of them at the polls who were saying that. And, yeah, I actually did not speak to a lot of Muslims who said they were voting for Harris. Most of them told me they were either voting for Jill Stein or for Donald Trump. Outstanding. Now, uh, what's your overall view um, for these these larger counties in Michigan? Do you think uh, do you have any inside scoop on 
on what how those might play out, or is it too close or too early to tell? Yeah, so two counties to watch are Kent County and Oakland County. O- Oakland County is the um, kind of the suburbs of Detroit, and then Kent County is the Grand Rapids area. And those used to be Republican strongholds, but Biden won them in 2020. And it's likely that Harris will win those counties, but the amount that she wins those by could determine whether or not she wins Michigan, because those have a lot of those demographics we've been talking about that have switched to supporting Trump, working class people, Hispanics, Black Americans, um, Christians, Jewish people, all those demographics who are tired of the Biden-Harris administration are looking to jump ship. So if we see enough Democratic defectors in those counties, that really could make a big difference in Michigan going red this year. Are you a betting person? Would you bet Am on I that? A betting what do you person? think? <laughs> um, I, I probably... I think that it's going to be really, really close in Michigan. I think it could really go either way. I spoke to Michigan, a really great Michigan pollster named Steve Mitchell this morning about his predictions. I'm going to be talking to him later tonight when we get a result about why whatever happened happened. He said he thinks that Harris might take a slight lead over Trump. And so I, I would trust him on that. But I definitely think anything could happen. I'm seeing Decision Desk is saying that, 50.2% 50.2% for Harris right now, 48.0% for Trump, and usually the Detroit area will come in kind of later, and that's going to be a lot of Democrat votes. So I think it definitely is possible that Harris will win Michigan, um, yeah. definitely is likely, but I think Trump definitely still has a chance. Now, um, before we wrap, I want to get your thoughts on some of the other battleground states. and. And there's a few, right? You got Michigan we talked about. But what about Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona, North Carolina, Georgia, Nevada? What do you think? Well, I think Georgia and North Carolina, um, I was surprised to see those called so early. But I think what we've seen from exit polling, Pennsylvania as well, is that a lot of African-American voters decided to vote for Trump this election. There's been a really big change Um, In those demographics, in people being really tired of the Biden-Harris economy, the open borders, um, feeling like their views and what matters to them are not being represented in the White House. So I think a lot that is definitely a lot to count account for those states um, going red right now. Now, Elizabeth, uh, for everybody that's listening and they say, man, I love this woman. She's fantastic. I can't wait to hear the next report. How do they find you? How do they listen to you? How do they read your reports? You can read my work at thedailysignal.com. You can listen to the Daily Signal podcast, Top News in 10, every day at 5 p.m. And you can follow me on X at the Eliz Mitchell. Outstanding. Well, I appreciate you being here. Uh, excellent conversation. And I uh, hope to speak with you again really soon. Thank you so much. Have a good night. You bet. Take care. And amigos, we continue with our coverage of what's going on. Uh, We see North Carolina being called for Trump by the Associated Press. Uh, They have the count at 230 to 187, uh, while Fox News has it at 216 to 193 without calling North Carolina yet. So things are looking good. in the right direction. Folks, keep it locked right here. It's Rich Valdez. We're coming right back. Jen Kurtz coming up. Don't go anywhere. America at Night. Your home for the best election coverage. Well, thank you, Rich, and thank you for everything. I know you very well, and I have I listen, but I have a lot of people that listen, and they love your show, and I appreciate it very much. America at Night with Rich Valdez. Do you accept the possibility that you and Vice President Harris both might not get to 270 electoral votes by the end of tonight? It should never happen. A thing like that should never happen. This election should be over. They spend all this money on machines. And frankly, if they'd use paper ballots, it would be over by 10 o'clock. And by the way, the paper ballots would cost 8%. It would be 8% of the cost. Uh, If they would use paper ballots, voter ID, uh, proof of citizenship, and one-day voting, it would all be over by 10 o'clock in the evening. 
it's crazy. Uh, they use these very expensive computers, and they, I'm hearing in Pennsylvania they won't have an answer till two or three days from now. Uh, I, I think it's an absolute outrage if that's the case. Now, maybe it'll be later, but it's uh, paper ballots in France. They went paper ballots because the mail-in was not working. It was corrupt. And in France, they went paper ballots. And uh, at 10 o'clock in the evening, they had 37 million votes counted and done. They had a winner. They had a loser. And in this country, I mean, I'm just hearing that in certain states, uh, it's going to be a long time. And it, it won't even be close. It, it, it won't even be that close. They say, I'm going to win the state. But it's going to take a long time to certify it. That, of course, is Donaldus Magnus El Trumpito, the 45th president of these United States, who uh, pushing hard to become the 47th president. And that was a clip from earlier today with reporters saying we need paper ballots. We need one day voting. We need a winner and a loser at the end of election night. And listen, I would love that. That does wonders for my ratings, right? If we could announce a winner between 10 and 1 Eastern time, man, that's fantastic. Anyway, uh, enough about me. I want to um, welcome in our guest. Our guest is uh, no stranger to the show, Jennifer Kearns, fantastic GOP strategist, former spokeswoman of the California Republican Party, the author of The Real War on Women and uh, radio host extraordinaire. Jen Kearns, welcome back. Hey, thanks so much for having me, Rich. I think your wish could come true. I think we're going to know a heck of a lot more about Pennsylvania here in the next 90 minutes. Woo! Well... Uh, I see. Uh, I'm looking at um, I'm looking at AP, Fox and Newsmax and um, Newsmax is projecting um, possibly not. They're not calling it yet, but they're projecting that North Carolina and Georgia will both go to Trump. And if what's your thought on Pennsylvania? Uh, you know, I'm actually at the Newsmax headquarters right now, just about six or seven feet away from the guys who are making those calls. They are confident yeah. in their call for Georgia tonight, as well as North Carolina. Uh, look, I am confident looking at the numbers in Pennsylvania, uh, having done, you know, the campaign math for the last 21 years. Uh, it looks very promising for Donald Trump tonight. Also knowing their ground game, uh, the, the presence of people like Elon Musk also in the state of Pennsylvania, uh, the multiple rallies Trump has had, and also the ground game that the Trump campaign has had. I'm very confident that in the next 90 minutes we could potentially be seeing Donald Trump projected to victory. Not sure that the media outlets will, will call it tonight. They may wait until morning. Uh, for ratings purposes and, you know, just so they're not the, you know, rotten egg that, that calls a race too fast. But uh, I'm I'm fairly confident in the next 90 minutes we'll, we'll have a pretty good idea of who wins Pennsylvania. Wowzers. Now, um, interesting. You mentioned something about all these rallies, and this is just a, a quick tidbit that I – of all the things I hear in these interviews, that this is one that stuck with me. I was just talking to Peter Navarro a little while ago, and he's in Mar-a-Lago, and he was like, you know, we've done 600 rallies. And I was like, wow, 600 rallies. That's a huge number. I don't know anybody who's done 600 of anything like that on a campaign trail, <laughs> you know, something that big. That, uh, that right. blew me away. I mean, it is incredible. I think this, Rich, is one of those campaign seasons – that really is going to set records. I think we're going to see record turnout of male voters uh, going back to Donald Trump's strategy that he decided on in, in mid-July around the time of his assassination attempt that he was going to go all in, put all of his chips in on the male voter in the United States of America. Uh, that was reflected in his choice of J.D. Vance as the vice presidential pick. And um, they have really ridden that strategy all the way to election night. And I think it's something that's going to pay dividends. I also think the black male voter is going to deliver the victories for Trump tonight. When we look at the exit numbers tomorrow, it, the story of 2020 was how the black female gave Joe Biden a vote. I think the black male vote is going to go Trump's way. And I think um, the numbers that will be coming in in the next uh, 30 minutes or so, Philadelphia is going to do their big ballot release. Uh, I think those numbers are going to be a little bit disappointing for Kamala Harris because she's depending on those Philadelphia urban voters, and they're just not that enthused about her. That's why you saw Barack Obama trying to whip up support in the last week or two. 
Um, so I, I think this is going to be an incredible night. I think when we wake up tomorrow morning and we start looking through those numbers, sifting through those poll numbers, we're going to see some really interesting stories here and some interesting coalitions that Donald Trump was able to build. Well, you know, Jen Kearns, number one, nobody's going to sleep here, right? We did that last time and we woke <laughs> up and it was not Christmas morning. It was horrible. <laughs> it was the, the big info dump or whatever they called it, the ballot drop. So, uh, nobody's yeah. going to sleep at least not till 1 a.m. Eastern, but, um, yeah. Uh, all jokes aside, the um, the the trajectory does seem very, very solid for Trump. And I agree with you from what I'm looking at. It looks like, you know, we will, you know, barring the issues where they they had a, a issue with 30,000 ballots in Wisconsin um, and, you know, some other issues that I think that we saw in in, um, in Nevada. Uh, these other states seem to be on the level where I th- hope I hope that we can have uh, a count in. You know, with the next uh, hour or two, like you're saying. So that's a good deal. Now, let's talk about the, the rest of these states. What about, what are your thoughts on Nevada? Well, you know, Nevada is one of those states where you have a border state. You also have, uh, you know, it sort of has that border politics uh, that California has. You have a lot of Californians, too, who have fled this state and have gone to the state right. of Nevada. So. It's sort of like a California light. They've also had some uh, voter integrity problems. Um, so Nevada is, is one of those wild cards that, you know, used to go red for Republicans. Now that's just not as, as sure of a thing. Um, Arizona is also quite interesting. Um, look at the moves that America First Legal, it's specifically run by Stephen Miller, the former immigration policy advisor to Donald Trump. Uh, America First Legal suing the state of Arizona just a few days ago for 214,000 illegal voters that the state of Arizona admitted, admitted, this is the ones we know about, Rich, admitted yeah. were on the voter rolls. And, and that's why you're seeing Arizona so close. They are neck and neck. Donald Trump really should be ahead by about 200,000 votes there, but they, but he won't be because of, of that election integrity issue. So I think you will see some of the election integrity issues that we had in 2020, but they won't be as widespread. And here is why, and I think you and I have talked about this before, the, uh, the chairmanship of the RNC, the guy at the top, Michael Watley, is an expert in ballot integrity. He knows where every single vote in the country is coming in at. He, he knows who is voting. He knows how they're voting. Um, he knows the neighborhoods. He knows down to the precincts, block level. And that is why, you know, uh, six months ago when he came in as the uh, RNC chair, people said, should we be excited about this guy? Is he boring? Who is this? We've never heard of this guy. And I said, no, no, he is the master of ballot integrity, and he's been the right guy for the job. And that's why you see some of these states not getting away with this shenanigans that they did in 2020. They're reporting earlier because they know the RNC has a robust team of elections attorneys watching them like hawks. You know, Jen Kearns, I think you're right. I've had uh, Michael Watley, the chairman, on a couple of times uh, in the last couple of months, and uh, that's all he talked about was uh, the election integrity efforts that they put together. And we saw them in action today, right, when in Philadelphia, when they were, excuse me, Pennsylvania, when they had this issue there. They went, they got their extra hour of voting time, they locked it down and squashed the beef real quick with the Republican mm-hmm. attorneys. And I'd never seen that before. Actually, I saw it in Bush 2004, but it was local to a, a campaign I was working on locally in New Hampshire. But this was a nationwide effort. And and uh, who I forget, I talked to a lot of people. Somebody was telling me there was... Uh, something like 500 attorneys in every battleground state um, uh-huh. with, you know, potential for more to, to get this rock and roll. And so I think that's that's the level that you need. No. Yeah, it is. And, you know, in 2020, the, the after story of that was that the RNC uh, under Ronna McDaniel didn't really have a, a robust elections attorney ground game. You had more people that were like interns, volunteers, people like that. Well, now you have seasoned attorneys uh, who are seasoned in in trial law, in election law, on the ground, watching over these people like hawks. It it does make a difference. And look, if there is another story that comes out of 2024, it's that maybe, just maybe, we have stopped the widespread cheating that uh, many people believe happened in the 2020 election. All right, now let's uh, well, let's pause right here. We'll come right back. I'm going to get some more speculation on the blue wall. It's starting to look kind of pink, and uh, and I'm looking at Wisconsin 
Michigan, and Pennsylvania looking pink, not blue. Jen Kearns don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. I want to listen to you, Rich, all the time. America at Night with Rich Valdez. There is nothing conservative about the Republican Party today. There really isn't, you know, standing with Vladimir Putin against your own, you know, intel services, kind of throwing Ukraine under the bus, a lot of spending, a future that's just based on dividing people against each other and not really showing any kind of an optimistic future. I think if the Republican Party loses, if Donald Trump loses, it's a chance for the GOP to kind of look inside and say, what have we done with our soul? How many times? I mean, if they'd have elected Nikki Haley, you probably could have won the presidency today and had the presidency for eight years. But instead, there's this cult. That is Adam Kinzinger. And I'm sure it's Kinzinger, but I like to say Kinzinger. And uh, Adam Kinzinger uh, is butt hurt like usual. He's a real... Anyway, I'm not going to go there. But Adam Kinzinger saying all the things he said. Jen Kearns, your reaction? Well, look, we know the only cult that exists in politics today is the cult of the left wing of the Democrat Party, the one that wants to put tampons in teenage boys' bathrooms, the one that wants boys to play against girls in sports and punch them in the face and walk through their locker rooms naked. Uh, We also know uh, there's only one cult that uh, prays at the altar of a free-for-all democracy. Someone like Kamala Harris, who didn't win a single vote in the primary, yet was elevated to this position. You have to wonder, uh, if anyone's doing soul-searching tonight, believe me, it's the Democrat Party and the Democrat strategists who are all looking at each other and saying, Gosh, we goofed up. Joe Biden probably could have won tonight if it were a matchup between Biden and Trump. But instead, they've got the left wing Californian uh, who is so far trailing behind Donald Trump tonight. You know, Jen Kearns, I think you're right. And, you know, when I hear Adam Kinzinger say that um, they have to look at, you know, if, if the Republicans lose tonight, they have to look at their soul, look at themselves in the mirror. I'm thinking this is exactly what Democrats need to do. Right. Um, they I think they've made a series of missteps along the way. And if anybody needs to look in the mirror and say, why is it that we're not competitive in these um, swing states? Why is it that right now Wisconsin, Michigan and Pennsylvania are all pink, leaning red? Why? It's because of them. It's because of their policies. It's everything that they've done to get here. So I'm I'm just um, beside myself that this guy anybody listens to him because he's not saying anything that I think is accurate or is that just me being overly critical? (laughs) No, not at all. In fact, I think a few people whose careers will be over after tonight. One is Adam Kinzinger and the other is uh, Liz Cheney. I mean, uh, who is going to listen to their advice uh, on either side, on the Republican side or on the Democrat side? Very few people. uh, And look, um, you know, it goes back to, Uh, George W. Bush, uh, when they said, hey, are you still going to have Dick Cheney on the ticket? You know, he's got kind of a negative, you know, connotation out there. And I think it was George W. Bush who said, you don't change horses midstream. If you won with with one formula, you keep going and you go for the reelection with that. And so I think Democrats tonight, they're really going to regret their strategy of changing horses midstream. Um, they, they might not have won with Biden, but I think they definitely won't win with Harris. And I think that's beginning to show as the coalition begins to fracture. And look, I think the reason why those um, northern states are not going uh, for her is because it's, those are manufacturing states. Those are working class states. And there is zero connection with this, you know, left wing lunatic from the state of California who claims uh, she's from the working class, but really had parents who were in the elite world of academia. And um, that is just a disconnect for most people. And again, it goes back to that male voter strategy 
that Donald Trump took on July 15th um, when he put J.D. Vance on the ticket. I think we're going to look back at that as as a major inflection point in the race where they said, hey, we're not going to try to battle on the Democrats' terms. We're not going to talk about the Dobbs race or the Dobbs ruling, excuse me, of 2022 at the U.S. Supreme Court. We're not going to fight on the Democrats' terms. We're going to fight on our terms, and it's going to be over topics like the economy, the border crisis, uh, safety, our daughters, and uh, the list goes on and on. And uh, down on that list, Rich, and you and I talked about this a couple of times on radio, way down on that list has been the issue of abortion. And so that's where Donald Trump deserves a lot of credit, especially if he wins tonight for being extremely message disciplined, something that people have critiqued him for in the past for not being. He has been extremely message disciplined in keeping the economy number one and keeping the border number two. And and by doing so, he's really had abortion down at number five, six, seven, and eight on the list of priorities for voters. Really well done. Jen Kern, stick with me. I want to wrap up with you. And while we're on the break, go over there, run into the uh, situation room over there and find out what's what in Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, We're coming right back with Jennifer Kearns. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. America at Night, your home for the best election coverage. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. All right, amigos, welcome back, familia. Rich Valdez, your liberty-loving Latino amigo. And our guest is Jennifer Kearns. Jennifer Kearns is the author of The Real War on Women, and uh, she is a Republican strategist with years of experience. Jennifer Kearns, uh, in the minute or so that we have remaining here, I want you to give us your you know, your best uh, one minute of analysis on Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. Well, the Republicans, I've just noticed, are leading in all of those states. Now, in NBC News is saying that those states are too close to call, quote unquote, using your quotes there. But if yeah. you look at Montana, Sheehy is ahead by a significant margin, almost 58 uh, percent for Sheehy. Wow. That is significant. Um, also in Michigan, Mike Rogers, the Republican, is also ahead. And also in, in uh, Wisconsin, the Republican is slightly ahead, only by a couple of points. What does that tell us? It tells us that um, the, the margin of the uh, congressional balance of power, it could go even more to Republicans' favor. But what it also tells us, Rich, is don't go to bed yet. This is looking good for Donald Trump if the Republican candidates are also leading in those states. And, but it's too close to call yet, but they're still leading. That is a very, very good sign for Donald Trump's campaign tonight. Outstanding analysis, Jen Kearns. Let everybody know how they can you know, learn more about your radio program and books and all the other work you do. Sure. They can go to allamericanradio.com or the realwaronwomen.com. And uh, look, we have a lot of work to do. Even if we win tonight, we got to make sure these liberal freaks never see the light of day at the ballot box ever again. Amen to that. Jennifer Kearns, everybody. Jen, I want to thank you. I appreciate it. Godspeed. Thank you. You bet. All right, amigos, we got one more hour to go. It's open phones across America with me, Rich Valdez, and the number for that, 833-482-5337. We're going to discuss the Electoral College and your call. So if you're up and you're awake, give me a call. Let me know what's going on in your neck of the woods. I want to hear from people all over the country, especially Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Arizona. Give me a call. Don't go anywhere. the city that never sleeps. 
17 miles from Madison Square Garden, New York City. It's America at Night with Rich Valdez, America's favorite late night talk program featuring interesting guests from around the world and calls from across America. And now, here is your host, Rich Valdez. Hi there, good evening, and what's up, America? I am Rich Valdez, Valdez with an S, at Rich Valdez on all of the social media, your liberty-loving Latino amigo. Happy to be here with you this evening. It's election night. We're live. We're national. This is our third hour of the show, and I'm excited. Very, very, very good race going on right now. We've been at it all night. Lots of great guests, and of course, I want to talk to you, the American people. Write the number down, 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. If you've never called this show before, I want you to call in tonight and tell me what your election experience has been so far. If you disagree with me on something, you definitely get moved to the front of the line. I want you to call the show tonight, 833-4-VALDEZ. And if you are in one of the battleground states and have something that you want to share, I'd love to hear what the vibe is like in your part of the country Give us a call, 833-482-5337, and uh, we continue our election night coverage. There is a clip that I want to share with you guys uh, because Lawrence O'Donnell from MSNBC, he says that the Founding Fathers creating the Electoral College was a massive voter suppression operation. And I, I can't help but think that this is stupid, but you decide. And what must always be remembered is the vote is suppressed in about at least more than 40 states. There's a massive voter suppression operation created by the founding fathers who got the electoral college. Correct. Who got many things grotesquely wrong from slavery to the electoral college. Think about how many more Californians would vote if they thought their vote mattered. How many more millions of votes would Kamala Harris get in the state of California if those voters thought their vote actually mattered? Would she get another million in the state of New York if they thought the vote mattered? I have voted in three states in my life, Massachusetts, then New York, then California, and I knew every single time my vote for president doesn't matter because we know who's going to win this state. And in those cases, it would be the Democrat every time. And so I, I mean, I have I know people in Massachusetts who haven't voted in decades because they just because they know the Democrats going to. Win. <laughs> OK, so it's a voter suppression operation and the Democrats always win. Thanks, Lawrence O'Donnell. Anyway, I want to get some reaction to that as we continue to cover the election results. And again, just a quick update on that. Um, looking at a few things. Fox News has the race at Harris 213, Trump 247. Fox News has the race at 216, 232 in favor of Trump. And the Associated Pest, uh, Pest, <laughs> that's funny. The Associated Press has the race at 230 for Trump, 209 for Harris. Now, back to this Electoral College uh, debacle here with Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC. I want to get some reaction to that uh, as we. Uh, discuss the Electoral College and how it's applying and working wonderfully this evening, in my opinion, uh, from somebody who's an expert in that area, Trent England. He's been on with us before. He's executive director of Save Our States. Trent, welcome. Thank you, Rich. It's a pleasure to be here. Likewise, a pleasure to have you. And it's election night. People are excited. There's a lot going on. Uh, I, I want to get your reaction first to what Lawrence O'Donnell said and and your thoughts on on the voter suppression of the Electoral College. Was that an accurate statement in your opinion? No, I, I think it's really it's really laughable, and it shows that Lawrence O'Donnell just doesn't understand the way that elections work. I mean, the, the reality is, uh, I, I don't think any of us are ever going to the polls thinking, well, I'm voting because I think that in the one election that I care about, my one vote is going to be the one that decides the difference, right? If, if, if that was what it took for us to get out to vote, nobody would ever go vote, right? Because very few elections in our country are decided by a single vote, right? We vote because we are participating in the process, and no matter who we're voting for, we are voting for the idea of a representative republic, 
which is what the Electoral College allows us to have. So no, it's just a, it's really an ignorant statement from Lawrence O'Donnell. And yeah, and I, I tend to agree with you. Uh, and I, I just think it was just oxymoronic uh, at that. But when we look at this is the rhetoric that I think comes from uh, the, the left within the media and and, and it, it, it sways the opinion of some people. I think it really does. And that's why you have people that either show up in droves or don't show up to vote. Uh, but ultimately, I think today is an actual example or an exercise in the Electoral College actually working, even though we haven't reached a decision yet. Uh, I think it's it, it's evident that it, it does, in fact, work. Would you agree? That, that's that's right. I mean, what we have seen over the course of the campaign is the Electoral College working exactly as it's intended to work, which is it forces the political parties and the presidential campaigns to reach out beyond their bases, to go outside of the places where they're already wildly popular, right? The Democrats uh, can't they can't win with the big cities alone. The Republicans can't win with small town and rural America alone, right? But the campaigns have got to reach out and build this this broader base of support across our country. It's profoundly healthy that you know the, the, you see the Democrats. I mean, you know they nominate uh, for vice president a governor from the Midwest. They they go around trying to convince people that they understand hunting and that they're okay with drilling for oil and all these things because they're trying to win the electoral college. And the, you know on the Republican side, you you see this outreach. I think particularly to Hispanics, to a lot of other groups of Americans as well, where. They they are going beyond their base to build a bigger coalition in order to win this genius system that the founders created in our Constitution. Yeah, I agree with that, Trent England. And I think they have to do that in order to try to maintain some sort of power because the, their power structure really is one of uh, of the tyranny of the majority. And, and I think that's always ultimately their goal. Um, I don't know, other than like educating people and participating in elections and trying to share the truth with as many as you, people as you can. Uh, if there's a solution to that, your thoughts? Well, I, I think that, yeah, I mean, it is an educational battle. Americans, I, I think we need to understand a couple of things. Well, I mean, one is the Electoral College really is, uh, you know, while, while the, the mechanisms can be described in ways that are complex, it is a two-step democratic process. We vote in our states, democratic election. The, the electors cast electoral votes for president and vice president, democratic election, right? It's a, it's a democratic process. It just plays out in two steps. And there are very, very few major democratic nations that actually use a national popular vote, a direct national election for anything. That, it would be unusual if we had a direct election for president. Uh, you know, Canada chooses their prime minister by having their parliament vote for them. That's a parliamentary system. That's the same as it is in Japan and Australia, the United Kingdom, Italy, Spain, you know, all around the world. That's the, the common system. Then you get to places like uh, India and Germany. They have versions of an electoral college as well. So, you know, there there is a reason why all these big countries don't want politics that can become regional politics that can become all splintered or balkanized or, you know, pick your, your favorite term to describe the fact that uh, in very big, very diverse democratic nations, politics tends to pull apart. And what we need is a constitutional structure that forces us to come together. And the Electoral College gives us a nudge in that direction. We, we've seen that through the campaign. We see two very big national political parties competing for power here. That's a lot better than if we had a bunch of regional splinter parties uh, competing for power. You know, as divisive as things are right now in our country, that would be much worse. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S.
America at Night, your home for the best election coverage. Well, thank you, Rich, and thank you for everything. I know you very well, and I have I listen, but I have a lot of people that listen, and they love your show, and I appreciate it very much. America at Night with Rich Valdez. If historians in the future are allowed to write books, and by the way, that question is open this morning, and if people mm. are allowed to go on television and say what they think in the future, which, again, that question is open this morning, in the future, historians are going to look back on this day and say this is the day that America made a choice between freedom and democracy on one side and authoritarianism and dictatorship on hey, the Mike. other. That's Michael Beschler, as they say he's a historian, and he was on The Morning Joke today on MSNBC. And Trent England, um, executive director of Save Our States, do you think um, this commentary about the historians is accurate? No, I, you know, the hyperbole from the left in this campaign, I, I actually think is, is a part of why they're losing right now. Yeah. You know, Donald Trump is not an unknown commodity, right? The, the man was president for four years. And I think that, I think that there are a lot of Americans out there who just don't don't take uh, what they hear from the media nearly as seriously as commentators like uh, like Michael Beckstoss does. Right? They, you know, those people take themselves very seriously, and I think a lot of Americans just look at that and say, "Give me a break!" Right? You're this yeah. this is some kind of self serving message. Uh, trying to scare people out of doing something that seems very much to be in their best interest, right? After runaway inflation for four years, people are are looking for something better, and they don't have to look that that many years in the past to to find a much better economy that that worked for many more Americans. Do you think the economy is ultimately the deciding factor here? You know, I think that it's a big part of it, but I think that it's I think that the economy for a lot of people means two things. I think it, it it definitely means, you know, what they're paying at the grocery store, what they're paying at the gas pump, what they think their prospects are for a job. But I think there's this this larger question has been injected into the race of just whether Americans are allowed to be optimistic anymore. And you see Trump being just much more you know, much higher on America, right? Much more optimistic about the future of the country versus, you know, so many of the folks on the left who, uh, you know, despite the fact that they, they tried to frame the campaign about, you know, joy, um, really have a very (laughs) gloomy message that, you know, that that the environment's going to kill us through climate change and we just have to learn to, to live with less and, you know, having having children is is somehow a negative thing, and trying to own your own house becomes a negative thing. And I, I think that I think that the Democrats really have a have a challenge with uh, trying to reconcile that vision of the future with what most people want, which which is something that's not gloomy, and and that you know I think most Americans are still proud to be Americans, and they want leaders who. Uh, uh, you know, who seem to be proud to be Americans as well. Now, uh, Trent, what uh, section of the country are you in and what's the, the election looking like around you? Yeah, so I am in Oklahoma, uh, which is a state that has gone completely red uh, with every county going for the Republican nominee for president since uh, 2004, I believe. Uh, despite the fact that that we still had uh, Democrats in control of the the legislature and governor's mansion until about 15 years ago, but uh, it's a state that um, has has become you know this is this is Trump country, uh, and uh, and I think it's a place that it's been interesting to me. I've only lived here about 10 years, but you know the Democrats I think could be competitive in Oklahoma. They used to run pro-life you know, pro-gun Democrats here, but as the Democratic Party has shifted to <laughs> the left, have an option. Yeah. that's right. I mean, those people can't get through the Democratic primaries, and so the, the party has gone from being, you know, 10 years ago kind of a legitimate player in Oklahoma politics to being a, a real sideshow. Hmm. Well, 
Um, that's not the case in a lot of the rest of the country as we're looking at this map. <laughs> Trent, I want you to let everybody know uh, how they can uh, learn more about the work you guys do. At, at Tell them a little bit about the work and then how, how they could find out more about Save Our States. Yes, yeah, so I created Save Our States 15 years ago to defend the Electoral College, particularly against the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact Campaign. Folks can learn all about that at SaveOurStates.com. And we also have a lot of resources just to educate people about the Electoral College. They can find those at SaveOurStates.com or at ElectoralCollege101.com. Outstanding. And how do they get you on social media if they want to follow you? Yeah, I'm just at Trent England on X, uh, or folks can follow at Save Our States on X as well, or just search for uh, for Save Our States on other social media channels also. Now, Trent, I know you're a scholar on, on the Electoral College, uh, but if you had to put on your um, political prognosticator cap, uh, how do you say it, this ends up? Uh, Fox News has it at 232 to 216 for Trump. Uh, let's see. Newsmax has it at 248 to 213 for Trump. And the Associated Press has it at 230 to 210 for Trump. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I think we're going to see here, um, you know, I, I would suspect within the next hour or so that uh, they're going to call Pennsylvania and Georgia for Trump. And at that point, uh, doesn't quite put him over the edge, but uh, but he will be close enough that frankly i don't think there's any way that uh, i mean once he once he wins arizona for example uh you know he he will be there it, it just doesn't look like the democrats were were able to to do the the work that they were trying to do of going out and convincing these you know voters outside of the cities in uh states like pennsylvania and uh north carolina that uh that they that they're moderate you know that they're not uh, you know, so far out there on the left that they can't relate to ordinary Americans. So I, it looks like that is going to to make the difference in in some of these key states. And and uh, yeah, I, I think I think it looks like Donald Trump will will become the only the second uh, president in history to serve two non consecutive terms with Grover Cleveland having been the first. What do you think about uh, Wisconsin and Michigan, which right now for the last hour and a half I'd say have been uh, leaning uh, Republican? Yeah, it, it looks uh, it, it looks like it's going to be very close in both of those states. I mean, it, it, certainly yeah. uh, Trump is doing better than he did four years ago, um, but maybe not quite as well as he did eight years ago. So I think we could see, you know, we could potentially see a state come down to, you know, the, the real margin where there's going to be a recount. Uh, Right. And, I'm hoping uh, that we can get past that that stage. Yeah, uh, Trent England. it won't come down to one state. <laughs> yeah, amen to that. Thanks for joining us, brother. I appreciate it. Check out Save Our States and everywhere he told you to follow him. And, folks, we're coming right back with your calls and more. We've got calls from all across the country, West Virginia, Montana, Missouri, Maryland, Idaho, and more. Don't go anywhere. I'm Rich Valdez. For the best election coverage, call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. All right, amigos, welcome back. We continue our conversation with you all, the American people. It's me, Rich Valdez. My voice is a little deeper than it usually is. I have been dealing with some allergies. Of all the time in the world to get allergies, I get them now. Like yesterday and today, rough, rough days. Anyway, uh, bear with me as we get through this. It's election night. We're bringing you the live coverage. And not a lot of uh, our competing programs uh, on the airwaves are live. We're live every night bringing you everything that happens in America at night. If it's happening at night, we're bringing it to you live. Our phone number, 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. And quick update. 
Um, following a couple of maps here, the Associated Press map has Vice President Kamala Harris, K. Malaitis, at 210 electoral college votes uh, to former President Trump, 230 electoral college votes. That's the Associated Press. We uh, switch over to Fox News, and their count is slightly higher. Fox News, uh, let's see, just updating right now, 216 for Harris, 232 for Trump. And we will go to Newsmax. Newsmax having Trump at 248 to Harris's 213. So if we stick with the uh, first map, um, we've got uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and Arizona all leaning Republican, but not uh, called yet for for Trump or for Harris. Uh, Nevada, not called for anybody. Um, Montana, no, Minnesota, leaning Democrat for Harris. Maine, leaning Democrat for Harris. New Hampshire, leaning Democrat for Harris. Uh, and that, that's it. Uh, uh, and Hawaii being called for Harris. Uh, Alaska still un, unaccounted for. Excuse me. Had to sneeze. So that is the uh, the count on that. Now, today has not gone off without a hitch. We, earlier we talked about some of the irregularities they had in Pennsylvania where the chairman of the Republican Party sent the uh, lawyers to rectify the problem and got them an extra hour of voting because, you know, there was some, some shady stuff going on. They weren't allowing the poll watchers to watch the polls. Um, something similar is happening, not poll watching, but with ballots in particular in Wisconsin. And uh, we got a report on that. Listen to this. They are now saying, according to election officials there, that they're going to have to rerun about 30,000 absentee ballots through tabulating machines for an abundance of caution because what they learned is that the doors of one of its tabulating machines were open. It hadn't been closed properly, and they want to make absolutely sure that the machine counted everything properly. So they are rerunning 30,000 ballots. Why that is important is it will mean that there will take a longer time to count those absentee ballots. And if you will remember back in 2020, it was the absentee ballots uh, and waiting for those to be counted, which we heard Donald Trump and the Republicans jump on saying there's some sort of malfeasance. Officials are saying this is not the case. There was an issue with one of the machines not being closed properly, and they want to make, out of abundance of caution, sure that each and every vote is properly counted. So we may have to wait a bit longer to find out what the tally of those absentee votes were in Milwaukee, the most populous city in Wisconsin. All right. So there you have that report, and they're saying that there is no funny business. It's not phony business. It is actually just a mistake. They forgot to close the door on 30,000 ballots. Now, just for perspective, 44,000 votes is what the 2020 election came down to across the battleground states. 44,000 votes changed the election. So I submit to you, does 30,000 votes in Wisconsin matter? Can somebody say that if if that is an irregularity that is occurring that that's not there's no significant proof that there is any irregularities that are not impacting the election 30,000 votes when the difference in 2020 was 44,000 uh no I don't buy it I'm sorry now I think they've gotten all that stuff handled by now because they're still counting and things are, are trending towards Trump in Wisconsin so good for him but We've got to get better at this thing that we're doing here, right? We've been doing this for a long time, elections. It's about time we start getting it right. Anyway, I want to get your thoughts on everything that's going on. Let's see. Where do we start tonight? The phone number, 833-482-5337, 833-4-VALDEZ. Let's let's go to Tommy calling us from Charleston, West Virginia, WCHS. That's Trump country tonight, right? Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, the Republican Party uh, 
had a rather strong uh, victory here uh, this evening uh, in uh, 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 President uh, uh, from President down to uh, a number of uh, other const- uh, statewide offices, including mm-hmm. Governor, Attorney General, U.S. Senate, uh, Governor Justice. Uh, uh, has been uh, elected to the U.S. Senate. Oh, and by the way, uh, consequently, so yes. the United States Senate is expected to be uh, uh, controlled by the Republican Party. That was something that Fox News was projecting a little while ago. I forgot to mention that. Go, go right ahead, Tommy. Uh, uh, yes, uh, a gentleman whose name escapes me uh, in Ohio uh, uh, is apparently a Republican uh, is going to uh, win against uh, Sherrod uh, Brown, the uh, Democratic incumbent senator uh, that was reported wow. locally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lots of big uh, games today. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I was calling because uh, a little bit ago you you played uh, a long clip, uh, which is cool because the he, he, He's not somebody you're simpatico with, but you gave him 90 seconds to state his case, which mm-hmm. I appreciate about you, the way you do your show. And he put down the Electoral College as voter suppression, as if, in his presentation, the Founding Fathers in 1787 meeting in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, to establish a constitution as if they said to themselves, hey, you know what, let's uh, suppress Democratic votes in California 250 years from now, or whatever it is. I mean, (laughs) Democrats are so desperate lately. But let me explain the Electoral College and why it exists. Quickly, because we're going to have to take a break soon. Your guest indicated this was a stroke of genius. No, it wasn't. It was Rhode Island and South Carolina, small states, but they had a port means they had could be the nation of Rhode Island and South Carolina and relate to the rest of the world. And they said, you're not going to shove us around. We're not going to let Pennsylvania and Virginia and New York and Massachusetts uh, shove us around. We want a system where we are an equal with the big boys. And in a large nation, which we certainly became uh, what, 10, 15 times larger than we were at that time as being established, it works well enough. Yeah, excellent point, Tommy. And I appreciate the uh, the trip down memory lane and the history lesson. Uh, ultimately, you know, those who don't know their history are doomed to repeat it, so I always appreciate that. Tommy in West Virginia, a big shout-out to WCHS. And uh, we continue with your calls and more straight ahead. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. Call now, 833-4-VALDEZ. That's 833-482-5337. 833-4-VALDEZ. That's Valdez with an S. America at Night, your home for the best election coverage. So when I say we will support a free and fair election, no, we're not going to allow them to steal it in the states or steal it at the Department of Justice or steal it with any other election official in the country. If it's a free and fair election, we will do what we've always done. We will honor it. So finally. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the Democrats' history. They honor it. it that is. is the big difference between the parties, one of the big. Okay, so... And on that point, I'll tell you, the political scientists have told us the hallmark characteristics of a fascist political party. Number one, they don't accept the outcome of democratic elections that don't go their way. Yeah. I, right? I, I mean, Number I, two, I, I, they embrace political violence as an instrument for obtaining power. And three, they're not organized democratically. They're organized top-down uh, as a cult of a personality around a charismatic or allegedly charismatic figure, right? I, I mean, and that's, 
That's a fascist party. They also don't put issues before the people for meaningful discussion and debate. This whole campaign has been wasted. What do they do? Scapegoating. Racism, anti-Semitism, immigrant bashing, and gay bashing. They got mad at, you know, our great president, Joe Biden, because he said there were semi-fascist currents running through the Republican Party. But I'm sorry, if the shoe semi-fits, you semi-wear it. And that's what they've done, you know? These guys are semi-pendejos. I mean, I am sorry I put you through so much of that clip, but it had to be done. So you could hear the now third iteration of Jamie Raskin, his latest, right? He started in March saying, we're going to use the 14th Amendment to make sure that we disqualify Trump. Then he said, well, you know, it's it's because we have this plan and we have 200 electors, uh, right? And now today it's we will support a free and fair election. So if, they, if it's not free and fair in their opinion, they won't support it. See how they set the stage? And, and everything that they're blaming on the Republicans here, they're going to do. And, and I, 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 look, I am going to put my money on Raskin voting to not certify something, trying to lead a charge, a revolt uh, against any win of Donald Trump. Should, tr- should Trump become victorious this evening, tomorrow, whenever it is they make the, the declaration? Should that be the case, my my submission to you is that that Raskin will try to thwart it because that's the only thing we've got. That's the only thing they've got, I should say. Anyway, your calls. Let's uh, go to the phones. Anita uh, is in Naples, Florida, WGUF. What's going on? Well, I didn't want to bring it up, but I, I have no idea why New Mexico is not doing anything about it. But uh, my nephew called me last night, or the night before, and he told me he was uh, he had he, he was in Texas. Of course, I didn't know that. Marcy May from District House of uh, Twenty Eight. It says District House. I have the phone number, but I don't have it with well, me. Well, I don't right need now. the names. Just tell me the problem. Okay. All right. The problem is they called him and and texted him and told him that uh, his vote was not cast along with some other people and they were looking into it and they also found out that uh the, so they're trying to get people out to vote sounds like a get out the vote operation but what what i always recommend is you know going to the republican party website because that's where they have the lawyers uh it's swamp the vote.com and i think there's also a vote alert.com that they're using to you know should you have any problems in the future because it's important to, to let them know so they can get the lawyers on it right away but hope everything worked out. Thank you, Anita. Shout out to everybody in Naples, Florida, on WGUF. Always good to hear uh, from our friends out in the Panhandle and uh, and ever else and elsewhere, I should say, in Florida on the West Coast. And uh, let us continue here. <clears throat> I want to go to Frank. Frank's calling us from Evergreen, Montana. Frank, go for it. Hello there, Rich. <clears throat> I wanted to mention. Back in 1985, yeah, before before Trump actually got into politics, he didn't become a registered Republican until two years later. Excuse me, I got to shift around here. Thank you. And um, at that time in New Jersey, there was a fad going around. It was the Cabbage Patch doll. You know, yeah, I remember banned, those. Of course. Uh, and they, they were some guy in Spain had put all these dirty rags inside of them, and people were getting sick from it and everything. But anyway, uh, later there was a a card uh, company, Tops. They make like baseball cards. Yeah, yeah, like trading cards. Yeah, and they they came up with the garbage. And they came with a stick of gum. Doll. Yeah, and they came up with the garbage patch kids, and. Um, Oh, the Garbage Pail Donald. Kids. That was like a knockoff of the Cabbage Patch Kids, but they were like yeah. mean. They had a yeah, Donald Dump. There's a Donald Dump card. But, yeah. you know, uh, he wasn't even in the politics, and the, and the media was just uh, making him so evil and uh, despicable and everything. But you, when you really look at it, um, you can even Google that. They, they sell the cards on eBay, but... My God. Yeah, I actually collected those as a kid. They were so funny. Yeah, but the, he's going to make it back to the throne. He will. Uh, um, and by gosh, uh, uh, you know, I think it's the real trash 
pale kids are the Democrats and Biden, hmm. really. If you check on their side on that line on the at the polls, you'll see garbage and litter in that section. You know, it's, well, it's we'll have to check the, it out. I, I got to take a pause right here. Frank in Evergreen, Montana. Uh, hopefully um, we'll get to check in with you again. I'm going to take a pause here. Don't go anywhere. This is America at Night with Rich Valdez. All right, America, welcome back. Rich Valdez with you for the next, I don't know, six minutes or so, not even. Uh, But uh, Trump is now projected to win battleground Georgia. Pennsylvania has not been called. But here's the big news. Kamala Harris will not address her supporters tonight. Now, I'm not going to make any conjecture, but I will say this. When you say you're not addressing your supporters tonight, What does that mean? I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to make my victory speech tomorrow. Yeah, right. Uh, I feel pretty good about that. Anyway, um, you don't call off your election night speech with people all over your headquarters waiting for you to say something and say, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Only Hillary Clinton does stuff like that. Uh, Let's go to Paul, Boise, Idaho, KBFI, very quickly. Gentlemen, patriot and scholar, you are rich. Oh, yeah, I, you, I caught the same. I caught the same thing that the uh, Democratic uh, spokesperson for Harris said, and I, and it sounds like a, a a defeat speech is what it sounded like. Um, I'm not going to read anything else into it, but you know, I sure would like to see Trump win. Make no mistake. Me but, too, Paul. Uh, I appreciate it, brother. God speed to you, my man. Shout out to KBFI in Idaho. And uh, let's go to Jerome's, Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, what's up, Jerome? Why is your girl not making a victory speech tonight? <laughs> well, we know why, but I'm going to tell you, Rich, America, you're going to rue the day that you put this guy back in office. Mark my words. Yeah, well, listen, I think uh, we're going to rue the day that we actually uh, – made the choices that were made back in 2020. And I don't think I made those choices, if you know what I mean. Jerome, thanks for your call. Please call again tomorrow so I can really rub it in. Uh, Sarah Bedford, Indiana, WBIW, go for it. Hey, real quick, I think we're becoming habituated to a dangerous uh, precedent, taking it seemingly impossible to count call elections when the polls yeah. close. And it just suddenly mysteriously taking long time and mysterious troves of decidedly pro-democratic votes are discovered. Votes, absentee, whatever they are, are always in existence of continuing trends. And that's why historically elections have been called, even before they're technically not counted. But suddenly we have this new thing that arises where they're suddenly un- uncountable and we have to wrench the process. It, it is smoke screen for tyranny, I'm telling you. So I I'm agree. hoping that Trump wins. Yeah, uh, listen, I'm with you. Uh, Got fingers crossed for Trump, praying for America. And again, Harris will not be speaking tonight. Not something that winners do. In my opinion, that's conjecture from me, not from anybody else. All right, America, thank you for being with us on this election night. We couldn't call it tonight, but man, it feels good. I think the 47th president of the United States will be called tomorrow. And my guess, my hope, it'll be Donaldus Magnus. Anyway, folks. Rich Valdez, take care, good night, and God bless you, America. Hasta mañana.